Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Senior Pastor of Community Church in Bishop, South Africa, Pastor Mangaliso Matsobane. Are you ready to hear the word of the Lord? All right. I want to entitle um, my subject today, The Grace to Multiply. Many things God speaks to us. Uh, those of you who are preachers, you will know God speaks and speaks and you're not sure what you want to call what you want to call. So um, I'm calling it the grace to multiply, but God can be calling it something else to you. So just listen to what the Holy Spirit will say the theme is. Amen. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, I want to begin with Matthew 4 19 in the King James Version. The New King James says, then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In the New Living Translation says, Jesus called out to them. Come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Amen. Now, follow me and I will make you. A time came in my life when I realized I need the Lord to make me. We all know that we have to be fishers of men. Amen. But it's not possible to be a fisher of man unless you follow Jesus. Amen. And following Jesus means allowing Jesus to make you a fisher of man. Sometimes we think we can be fishers of man. And we make these great projections. Say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, but until there is a making, everybody say a making. Until there is a making, everything else you desire is just a desire. There has to be a process of being made to be fishers of men. Amen? Now, Genesis 1.28 tells us, Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the beds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So be fruitful and multiply in that order. Be fruitful and multiply. We are talking about the anointing to multiply, but it is impossible to multiply before you are fruitful. The order is be fruitful, then multiply. So we all want to multiply. But there's a catch. The catch is be fruitful. Now, in order for you to be fruitful, you need to, you know, you need to multiply. Now, we all want to multiply, but there is a process of what? Multiplication. Being fruitful has a process which starts with seed. So let's go back. Multiplication is the goal. So let's take a step back. Multiplication is the vision. We all want to multiply. But for us to multiply, we must be fruitful. But for you to be fruitful, there's a process of being fruitful. Everything has a process. There's a process of being fruitful. And the process of being fruitful is we go back to seed. So for you to multiply, there must be seed that dies there must be seed that dies and goes to the ground and that process leads to fruitfulness and that process leads to multiplication now all these things are processes because the seed in order for the seed to be able to produce fruit fruit is the last stage we agree? Mm. You take a dead seed, you put it in the ground, you cover it, you water it, and then the seed, does, does it start producing fruit? No, it grows. It's a process. And it goes through being watered and being watered, and it grows. When it grows, it, it goes firstly, it shoots out, it becomes a stem, and the stems have branches, and the branches have leaves. Where is this fruit? Let alone multiplication. Where is this fruit? And the, and the leaves, after some time, then you see something budding. 
Hello, hello, hello. Then you see something budding. Say, hey, there's hope. There's what? So that's the process of being made. For multiplication to come, there is a process. And it starts from the seed. But the seed must die. Unless a seed of corn dies, it abides alone. Living seeds that are jumping and screaming cannot help us much. The seed must die and go into the ground. Which leads me to the process of... But now before the seed, there's another process. Hey! The process is the soil. The soil. The type of the soil. The condition of the soil. So there you are excited with the seed and you're throwing it into clay. Clay soil. Do you think there'll be any hope there? Now look at Matthew chapter 13. So these are processes. Everybody say soil. Seed, fruit, multiplication. So now Ibona must see process. You see the process, eh? Look at this. Matthew 13, verse 3 to 9. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seeds fall on the wayside. And the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered and withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Verse number eight. But others fell on good ground. That's my focus. And others fell on good ground. And yielded a crop. Now, even in good ground, there are three dimensions. So thank God I have good ground. But even in good ground, there's still three levels. Some, everybody say some. some. That means not all. Some fell, some produced a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Let him who has ears hear what the Lord is saying here. In other words, what that means is there's a hidden mystery in that parable. There's a hidden mystery in that parable. And I want to unpack by God's grace my understanding of that hidden, hidden mystery so that we understand what is this thing that the Lord is talking about. So I don't even want to deal yet. I don't want to go there because we don't have all the time of the seeds that fell on the wayside, the seeds that fell on the stony grounds, the seeds that fell on the thorns. We all know that another day, another sermon, another time. Let's focus on good ground. Let's assume we are all good ground. Let's start there. Let's start there. Are you good ground? Ask your neighbor, are you good ground? Right. Now there are levels. Good <clears throat> my level. There are levels. Of good ground. There are what? Levels. So let's find out which level. So we have all established we are all good ground. But there are levels. So let me help you. The Bible says in verse number 23 of the same chapter, Matthew 13, but he who received seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, some thirtyfold. So he who is good ground is he who hears the word. He who does what? Who hears the word. So right now we are all hearing. Let me qualify that. Rephrase that. We are all listening. 
that does not mean we are necessarily hearing. We are all listening. But the Bible says, for good ground to form, he who hears, not he who listens. Because many can listen, but a very few can hear. We can come to a conference like this and sit for three days under powerful ministry of God's word. And we are all listening and taking notes. But how many of us are hearing? That's why the Bible says, he who has ear, let him hear, not let him listen. He who has ears, let him hear. Because people can go to the same event, hear the same word, or listen to the same word, but not hear the same thing. So you need to ask the Lord today to give you a hearing ear. Say, Father, give me a hearing ear. Not just a listening ear, a hearing ear. A hearing ear. So, for good ground to form, it's he who hears the word. And the word, when it's heard, my understanding of hearing is conception. In other words, in other words, I am listening, but I have not yet conceived because I am not yet hearing. Help me. So I am listening, but what I'm listening to, it's a good word. It's okay. It's a good word. But you see, good is not good enough. It must move beyond good. It must enter a dimension of conception where there's an aha moment. A what? Like lights on. Now I get it. So let me say to you, do not leave this, refuse to leave this conference before your aha moment. Now I get it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So in other words, God is speaking. We are all listening, but may we hear. When you hear the word, the word that you hear, it means now the word goes into the ground, into the seed, into good ground. And then it yields fruit. It produces, because it's in good ground, it produces based on the capacity to hear. So these levels of hearing, these levels... There are those who hear at a 30-fold dimension. But they are hearing also. But they are hearing at a 30-fold dimension. But there are those who are hearing at a 60-fold dimension. And there are others who are hearing at a 100-fold dimension. The reason why we all heard the same thing, but we produce different fruit or different yield, different capacity, multiplication comes only based on your level of the grace to hear. God cannot give you more than your capacity can handle. So your prayer this morning must say, Father, stretch my ability to hear so that I am able to receive and conceive the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. This takes me to a, another way to explain this analogy of levels is we need to understand that there is 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Let's go to the tabernacle of Moses. The tabernacle of Moses has got also the same dimension. Three dimensions. Remember? Those of you who know your Bibles, ask your neighbor, do you know your Bible? So the tabernacle, of, we must know the Bible, know the syllabus, syllabus. Curriculum. 
The Bible. Know the Bible. Because some of us don't know the Bible, the textbook, the thing that makes you who you are today. So in the tabernacle of Moses, Genesis 25, Genesis 26, we don't have the time, it's very long. There are three compartments to the tabernacle of, Dave, of, of, of Moses. The outer court, everybody say outer court. The inner court, or what we call the holy place. And then the most holy place. What happened in the outer court? And I'm going to align this together. That in the outer court, there was, and let me help you, there was a brazen altar and there was a lover. The brazen altar spoke of, that's where they made sacrifices. So in the outer court, there is noise, screaming. Let's bring it to the to the to the to the to its symbolic meaning. There is a lot of flesh and crying because that's where the slaughter is happening. Outer court. So that to me is a thirtyfold dimension. A thirtyfold dimension, outer court dimension. That is where many believers, hmm, and I said believers. Many believers who love the Lord but are still controlled by the flesh. You will find them in the outer cord because the outer cord it's where there is a lot of slaughtering. Noise of animals going meh. Everybody's crying out there. So the more you complain, the more you tell us where you are. We can locate you. We, we can quickly locate you. <clears throat> so without saying much, we just say, oh, okay, outer court. Outer court. So there's a, there's a brazen altar and there is slaughtering because something must die. Die to your will, die to your issues, die to your comforts, die to your whatever, die to your time, die to your money, die to your, you know, die. There's a lot of dying. It's in the outer court. There's blood everywhere. Hey, blood everywhere. So if you are working with your disciples and you realize there's a lot of noise, now you know where they are at. They are in a place called the outer court. It's a 30-fold dimension. There's a lot of sacrificing. And you better make sure the thing is dead. You kill it. There's no killing. There's no slaughter in the, in the inner court. The thing must die outside. Say to your neighbor, die quickly. <sighs> die quickly. Die quickly. And so we see that in the outer court, there is that slaughtering and the, and the lava to wash after you have been, after it's been slaughtered and dead. And it's, you wash before the high priest entered into the holy place. There had to be a lot of slaughtering and then washing, cleansing, cleansing, making sure that all the issues of the flesh are dealt with. And then we step into the holy place. In the holy place, there are three pieces of furniture. Quickly, let me help you. There is a table of showbread. There is a Campbell lampstand. And there is an altar of incense. Everybody say biblical studies. So what is the use of the table of showbread. The table of showbread symbolically speaks of the word of God. What does that tell you? You cannot begin to even partake of the understanding of God's word when there's still a lot of flesh in your life. You can be listening to verses and preachings, but there's no, your, your ability to hear is limited to how much you have died. Because the word of God will always challenge you to the place of the cross. The place of dying. 
the word. And so you step into, so in the inner place or the, or the holy place, there is a table of showbread. That's where we dine with the king, communion with the king. That's where we dine. That's where we eat. That's where we hear. That's where we, eat. there is a eating. There is a, there is a growing. We are growing muscle. We are understanding. The word migrates into milk. Everybody say milk. milk. Then bread. bread. Strong meat. Three dimensions. The Bible says as babies, we are fit for the milk of the word. But the Bible also says that bread, the word of God is bread. So it even, it, it, it moves up with its intensity. The ability of the word, babies are fed milk because that's all they can be able to assimilate. But as they grow, we give them a little bit harder. Then the word becomes bread the bread of life then as they migrate and grow higher then the word becomes meat strong meat and they are able to chew there are certain things in the scriptures when you are now matured you've got to chew a little bit on them chew a little bit but it has to be levels and so when you see another furniture it's called lampstand the golden lampstand or the candlestick the lampstand speaks of revelation because it's a lamp it lights this is in the holy place this is the process of multiplication we are still there are you still here yes don't think i'm somewhere else it's a process i'm explaining the process because sometimes you say multiply and you think boom it's gonna happen there's a process where are you in the process Find yourself, locate yourself. Where are you in the process of multiplication? And so in the inner place, in the inner place of the holy place, there is a candle lamp stand which speaks of revelation. What does this mean? It means you can partake of the bread, but your level of revelation could be limited. Many of us eat the bread. Whether at the milk stage or at the, you know, the word of God. Whether at the milk stage or the bread stage or the strong meat stage at different levels. But we do partake of the word. But not all of us have the revelation of what we are partaking of. Revelation. is Chile in Kosa. Revelation. You need revelation. Say, I need revelation. This is where your aha moment comes in. Because when you read this scripture, have you ever read the same scripture and somebody preaches on it and you're like, are they reading the same scripture I've been reading? What does that tell you? Different level of revelation. But it's found in the holy place. So you must have died in the outer court, 30-fold. And in the inner court, 60-fold, that's where you find the bread and the revelation, the revelation of the word. But there's another piece of finisher. It's called the golden lampstand. What is the, I mean, the, the, the altar of incense, rather. The third piece of finisher, the altar, the altar of incense is the anointing. Hmm. So when you are in that dimension, which is the 60-fold dimension, which is a place where, you know, your, your soil, the soil of your spirit, when the word of God lands, because you have now died to self and entered a dimension where you can receive the word of God and you can receive revelation, there is also an anointing. What is that anointing? The anointing means empowered to serve. There is a grace. You operate in a a higher level than usual that is why and we all grow into these dimensions are you hearing what I'm saying so there is that level that dimension where God deals with you where you are now walking not in your own ability but it's the anointing and it's that anointing that brings you into the holy of holies because right at the holy of holies the curtain that separates this is the tabernacle of Moses. It's by the anointing. So as you come into the dimension of the anointing, the curtains open up and then you step into the most holy place. Let me tell you what happens in the most holy place. The silence. Yeah. 
you take orders. You don't question anything. You don't ask anything. In fact, the priest, the high priest, only the high priest entered into the Holy of Holies. They had to put a chain on his leg all the way out in case he died in there. Because, and listen to another thing. No one had to perspire like I'm perspiring. Because sweat meant what? Sweat meant human effort. So when you come into the most holy place, that's why Pastor Bert said yesterday night, he said, if you say you are overwhelmed, you are doing it wrongly. You are, you are trying to, you are trying to multiply. <laughs> Unless a seed of corn dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it multiplies. We don't see multiplication of fruit unless that one seed of fruit died. So, in the most holy place, there's silence. Only God talks. And there's only one piece of furniture. The ark of the covenant. Matters of the covenant. Ah. When you are there, deep calls unto deep. When you are there, iron sharpens iron. When you are there, God calls you my friend. Yes, there are things that God tells you in the place, in the most holy place, that he doesn't tell people in the outer court. Because they will not appreciate precious pearls. Because the Bible says you don't throw precious pearls to swines. What that means is, you do not give things that are quality to multitudes. You give them to disciples, people that have died. Because multitudes, multitudes, multitudes do not appreciate revelation, depth. They say, please pray for, just pray for, when, when is the point where we pray for people? Um, as soon as you finish, please, I'm waiting for that part where you say, come, be laid hands on. That's multitudes. They are here for themselves. <laughs> Multitudes come for their needs. They are overwhelmed by their needs. And all they feel and see is their needs. But in the most holy place, you have died to your will, died to your own strategy, died to your agenda, died to your plan. Everything has died. Only the will of God lives. You are before the presence. You are dead. I think that's what Pastor Bear did yesterday. So I'm sure that's a new way of dying. You are dead. <laughs> this is why it's important. I'm talking about hearing. So when you are in the most holy place and you have died to self, died to your will, died to your agenda, died to your ambition, being frustrated and stopped being frustrated and graduated beyond frustration, there's a place beyond frustration, and graduated beyond frustration and became a dead man. I've never seen a cops complaining. I've never seen a cops responding. I've never seen a cops answering back. I've never seen a cops having an opinion. Why are we having corpses that are having opinions? And so, in the, in the Holy of Holies, one piece of furniture, God is speaking. You do not matter. You do not matter. Then we can talk of multiplication because from that point, there is no ability. We can never multiply in our own human strength. It's not possible. It takes, you see, while you can do it in your strength, it's still not God, it's still you. At a point where you can no longer do it and you hand over to God, that's when multiplication begins and it explodes because it's no longer your effort. Is God at work? Let me give you an, a last illustration and we're wrapping this up. Ezekiel 47, from verse number 1 to verse number 10. I can't read the 10 verses. I will summarize them and focus on verse number 8 to 10. This is Ezekiel. 
taken by the Spirit of God, brought into the temple. When he's brought into the temple, the temple underneath, there is water that is flowing outside of the temple. As this water is flowing, as Ezekiel looks at it, it's flowing ankle deep. Everybody say ankle deep. So ankle deep and then the angel calculates again and as the water goes further, it goes up to knee deep. Everybody say knee deep. And then he calculates even further and the water becomes waist deep. Everybody say waist deep. And then as he calculates, it becomes too, you know, the water comes up to the shoulder so high that he can swim in it. Listen to the word of the Lord. Verse 8, Ezekiel chapter 47. Then he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that comes, that moves, wherever the water is, it will live. There will be very great, there will be a very great multitude of fish. Because these waters go there, for they will be healed and everything will leave wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Engedi to Enagline. They will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kind as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. Here's the picture. The water represents, in my understanding, the presence of God. The water, the water represents, in my understanding, the Spirit of the Lord and the influence of the Holy Spirit on your life. The water comes from the temple. The water flows from the temple and it's ankle deep as you go out. It's as you go out, not as you stay in, as you go out of the temple. So the water is running out. It's not a dam. It's a river. Please. This thing we are doing is not a dam. It's a river. So the water is running. The river is running. As it runs out, it's ankle deep. What is ankle deep? That to me is another pattern. 30 fold. Out of God. The influence of the spirit is only ankle. Now ankle deep means you can kick the water. You are, full, you are in full control. Full control. You are living. You are alive. Your flesh is alive. You have an opinion. You are talking. You are, hey, you know, you know, you know. But as you go deeper with God, everybody say deeper. Then the water becomes knee deep. Now knee deep, it's an influence of the Holy Spirit. It's a certain dimension, but you are still in control, but it's a little bit harder. You are beginning to learn. Remember, 30 fold is 0 to 30. We understand, Muslim. Arithmetic. 30 fold is 0 to 30. So somewhere there, there's an ankle and there's a knee deep. Somewhere there. Hello. But as you go deeper with God, as you open up your capacity, the water becomes waist deep. Now when it becomes waist deep, can you run? Hey, the influence of the spirit is holding you. God, your opinions are being reduced. What you think, what you feel, what you want, what you wish, only half is left. But we don't want that half. Everything must die. As you go deeper, the waters come up. You can swim. You start to float. If you let go, those of you who know how to swim, I don't. Those of you, those of you who know how to swim who have told us, they've tried to teach me to swim, it never worked. They say to me, trust the water. Lift, trust, try. I'm thinking, trust? How do you? How do, you how do you trust something that has no surface to hold you up? Anyway, it's a long story. 
But you need to learn how to trust the presence of the others. You will never be able to swim. You must learn how to trust. And as you swim, now you begin to see dimensions. But listen to what this river does. Everywhere it goes, it brings life. This your river, what life is it bringing? This river you claim is inside. How much life? The Bible says as you look at the banks of the river, trees are growing. Trees are growing. And listen to the New Living Translation. It gives us an understanding what kind of a river is this. It says in the New Living Translation, verse 8, Ezekiel 47, verse 8 to 10. It says, then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of the stream will make the salty water of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. So now we realize, oh, there are two types of water bodies here. There's a river and there is the Dead Sea. Now the Dead Sea is dead. That means there's no life in the, in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea we are living in, the world. We are the river that must go and bring life into that Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, there's no fishes. There's no life in the Dead Sea. Till recently when they discovered something. But otherwise, there's nothing that lives in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is dead. It's too salt. It's more salty than the ocean. The waters in the Dead Sea. But the Bible says, when the river comes, as it flows, when it touches the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea comes alive. There is a Dead Sea that God is assigning you to. As I close. There is a Dead Sea that God is assigning you to. But for the Dead Sea to come alive, there must be the waters of life. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Of living waters as these rivers flow that's how multiplication comes you must allow the influence of the Holy Spirit locate yourself this morning where am I in my ability to hear am I in the outer court am I in the inner court am I in the Holy of Holies where am I am I still trying to still allow the flesh or have I died more of God is only possible when we die. I want to pray today that God will grant you the ability. You know what the scripture says? It says that river, when it flows, the fishes that are in the sea, in the Mediterranean Sea, it says in the, in the NLT, are the same fishes that are in that river. Now that's amazing. When your river starts to grow and the waters are rising, all kinds of fishes will be attracted. The reason why we don't see many souls come into Christ, maybe in your life, is because the level of the river is attracting, is attracting little, what, are, what do you call those tin fishes? Sardines. Little sardines everywhere, sardines. Thank God, at least there's sardines. My goodness. There are people who have nothing. But we're trusting God for bigger fishes to a point of having sharks stand. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, increase my capacity. Stretch my capacity. Make me fertile soil. Not just 30 fold, not just 60 fold, but a hundred fold. This morning, give me an ear that hears, not just listens. Help me to hear in a hundred fold level and produce a hundred fold in Jesus' name. If you believe in that prayer, shout aloud, amen.